How's it going everyone? Sports Snippets, Dennis Sullivan here to give a positive thumbs up to the Miami Heat. Nice job. Way to get it done. 109-107 Sunday against the Brooklyn Nets. Both teams playing short-handed. Want to get into this game with you as far as a little bit more of an in-depth discussion is concerned. If you do like the content of this particular video, go ahead, hit that thumbs up. Would certainly appreciate it. And feel free to subscribe to Sports Snippets with Dennis Sullivan. Hit the notification bell for future videos. We got plenty on the way regarding the Heat and the NBA for that matter. So let's get it going, guys. This was a great game to, to watch on a Sunday, a late Sunday afternoon. And the Heat victorious 109-107 on a Bam Adebayo 13-foot jumper that would just rattle in and lead the Heat to victory. As mentioned just a few short seconds ago, both teams shorthanded. So you had the Heat were without Jimmy Butler, the Nets playing without James Harden again, and also without Kevin Durant, uh, who would injure himself in the first half half looked like he took a shot there to the thigh area so we await the status of Kevin Durant moving forward this was definitely one the Heat had to get there's a lot to talk about in terms of the way the East looks now I mean it changes every day of course going to have a video again coming up in a few short days like I did last week as far as the Eastern Conference goes the way it's shaping up because now we're down to about 15 games guys that's about it he'd improved to 29 and 28 so you're they're a game over 500 they would win the battle of the board so there there is some good things here after the disaster in minnesota on friday night the heat bounce back and win the battle of the boards 53 to 38 Dwayne Dedman was a big part of that. He would play 15 very effective minutes off the bench. A lot of Heat fans definitely excited to see that. The, the field goal shooting and the shooting from three was very close on this one. I mean, Nets shot, for example, a little over 47.5%. The Heat shot a little over 44%. So, I mean, you know, you're only looking at a couple of percentage points there. Heat actually shot a little bit better than three when it comes to percent. They would make 16 threes, 41%. Nets made 17 threes, but took a few more as well. So they would they would convert about 39.5%. Uh, the Nets would win the turnover, turnover battle, however, 17 to 11. But it was the inside play, the rebounding. Bam certainly stepping up, which was awesome to see. That, that was just what this team needed he would lead the way on the boards with 15 big rebounds with Bam Adebayo. And I'm telling you now, guys, and it's nice to see, you know, Kendrick Nunn get a couple of starts under his belt. He just looks good out there. I like, it's, it's hard not to like Kendrick Nunn getting the playing time, getting the minutes. Goran Dragic playing well off the bench. If you notice, though, the reserves, the key reserves that usually score off the bench for the Heat, and of course I'm talking about Drogic and Tyler Hero, they, they, they both played overall pretty well, but they didn't shoot the ball particular, particularly well from the field. Nets played pretty good defense. I think they, they had a little something to do with that. Nets, Steve Nash has them playing tough defense. I mean, remember, this is the team with basically the second best record in the East. I said almost, well, they're only like, I believe about two games out now without loss, give or take maybe a half game. But they were right there with the Sixers. I mean, they were about a half a game out if we look at last week. And then they, they lost a little ground over these last few days with the injuries and all that stuff. So the Heat get a much needed win, guys. Much needed win. I want to run through some of the individual performances. I'll have some closing thoughts, and then we got to look forward to Houston. Houston's coming up. I'm looking for where I, okay, here we are. <laughs> Had my little notation of where uh, I put the upcoming, well, the next two games. Anyway, it looks like 
We're going to be going up against uh, the Texas teams here on the 18th and 19th, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So as mentioned, Bam would lead the way, 21 points, 15 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 steals. What's not to like about that? Kendrick Nunn, as mentioned, was very effective. He had 17 points, 3 assists, 2 steals. Trevor Ariza played a nice first half, was very involved in the offense, was scoring some nice... I mean, he had about 8, 9 points in the first quarter alone. He would finish with 15 and 9 rebounds. Duncan Robinson would have 11 points and 2 steals. Andre Iguodala gets the start. Jimmy Butler out, as mentioned a moment ago. He would play a nice all-around game, as he always does. 8 points, 3 rebounds, 5 assists, and a block. Goran and, of course, Tyler Hero off the bench. You had Dragic. Dragic almost had a triple-double. I mean, he had 18 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists, and a steal. It's funny how you watch Dragic. I mean, he gets in the lane, and he's so good at using either hand. I mean, he had that one. It was, it was like a, a mini fast break, and he, he caught it in traffic and just laid it in with his right hand. And I was watching the bottom part of my screen here when I was home watching the game. And I'm pretty sure he went, just as a side note, I'm pretty sure he went off his right foot. I'd have to see it again. But it's funny, you know, you do something like that in high school or, you know, at the playground. <laughs> you know, you, you go out to a place and pick up basketball and you make a layup off, your, off the wrong foot. I mean, you're you might hear something about that. You know, you might hear some chatter about that. But when you're Goran Dragic, who does such a great job using either hand, because he really does. He's really good in traffic with the ball. It kind of gets overlooked. Um, I think he technically went off the wrong foot. But again, he's Goran Dragic, and we're regular guys playing pickup basketball. All right. So um, Hero would finish. Hero also, he, he had some nice uh, overall numbers. I mean, he only scored nine. That's below his average, but four rebounds, six assists, and a steal. Uh, the Heat would only go to four players off the bench. I have no problems with that. You have Butler out. Uh, Precious didn't play um, from what I'm seeing here, and I didn't see him out there when I'm watching the game. So, guys, I... Don't know the full story of that, actually. I have to follow up. We'll have something for you a little later in the week. What's going on there? KZ Akpala played a little bit off the bench. He had a rebound and a steal. Maybe, hey, there's an opportunity. Maybe a little more KZ Akpala. I wouldn't mind that at all. One play that he made that I really liked, if you saw, it was off a steal. He gets it on the left wing. A lot of players, he was only maybe 12 to 14 feet away from the basket. A lot of NBA players would have pulled up, tried to hit a jumper from that point, because the defender pretty much had position. I mean, he wasn't just standing there trying to set up a charge. But KZ just went right at him. I mean, he got hammered pretty good on that play. But he drew the foul. He didn't hit the free throws. But that was a nice, aggressive play by Casey Apala. I really like to see that, actually. That was nice. And Dwayne Dedman. Okay, real quick, guys. Oh, he logs 15 minutes. As I had mentioned uh, before, I predict him around if just that, 15 minutes. That's all we really need. Maybe give him a few more minutes, but that's about, if he's playing 15 good minutes, the Heat are definitely benefiting from, from that overall. His numbers were fantastic today. He hits eight free throws, goes eight of eight from the line. So he finishes actually with a, he had a double-double in 15 minutes. I don't, we can't expect that every time, but he had 10 points, 10 rebounds in 15 minutes. So <laughs> great job, Dwayne Dedman. Welcome to Miami. That was pretty impressive. The... Nets had a great performance by Landry Shamet with 30 points, two rebounds, three assists. He led the way. I believe that is a career high for Shamet off the bench. Kyrie Irving didn't have one of his better games. Credit the Heat defense there. 20 points, four rebounds, nine assists. He did have two steals, two blocks. Joe Harris, 12 points, two rebounds, three assists, and a steal. Durant, as mentioned, left early. He did score eight points. He had a rebound and a block. Bruce Bowen was big on the boards with 11 rebounds. He did score eight points. He had two steals and a block. Surprised to see Blake Griffin. It seemed like he scored more than seven points out there, but that's what, that's what it's showing me. Seven points, six rebounds, four assists, and a steal. 
Um, Blake Griffin's a, that's a heck of a pickup though for the Nets. Nets are pretty tough. I mean, they're looking good in a moment before stick around. I just got a few more minutes here. I'm going to go over the net bench right now, but stick around because I want to do a brief, a brief thought on how this may work out come playoff time. So stay tuned for that. Timothy uh, Lowu Cabarro, I know, I, I hope I did not, uh, mispronounce his name. He had seven points and a steal. We already talked about Shamit, Jeff Green. He Jeff Green's a nice player off the bench. I mean, the Nets haven't, you know, they're they're not having a great season by by mistake, guys. I mean, it's not just the big three. They got some pretty good players coming off their bench. Eight points for Jeff Green, a, a steal and a block. Nicholas Claxton, four points, six rebounds, two steals and a block. And Elise Johnson had three points and three rebounds and two assists off the bench for the Brooklyn Nets. So, guys, <clears throat> it is time for now the Rockets on the 19th. So that's, that's tonight. That's Monday night, the, the 19th, right off the bat. Then the Heat get a well-deserved day off on Tuesday the 20th and bounce back and play on the road in San Antonio. That won't be easy. That's Wednesday night, April 21st. Now, in closing, in closing, as you may recall, did a video a few days ago, more of an Eastern Conference update. I think I want to do that again, actually, now that I think of it. Uh, we'll do like a midweek kind of Eastern Conference, where are we, what the heck's going on with, with, with the standings there, because we're down to about 15 games. Now, this matchup that we saw today, although key players missing on both teams, this could be a first-round matchup. Because if you look at these standings right now, the Heat are seventh, right? It's beginning to take form that the Heat could very well finish as a seventh seed, which wouldn't be the end of the world. They could go a little higher, but the problem is the Celtics, the Knicks, and the Hawks are all three of those teams are hot. There are roughly two games each of them ahead of the Heat, which can you can overcome still one of those teams, no doubt. But just to repeat, the Celtics, the Hawks, and the New York Knicks are all playing good basketball. Uh, they're looking very good as far as uh, finishing definitely as a playoff team. The two teams that are having a lot of trouble right now are Charlotte. Okay, you have Charlotte Hornets, who if the season ended today would be an eighth seed. And the surprise to me, guys, I mean, as a Heat fan, I'll take it, but the Indiana Pacers are going into Sunday night's action were four games under 500 at 26 and 30. So you got to take a look at that. That's surprising. I mean, I'm, I'm just shocked at that. Don't, uh, I mean, I, I watch the Pacers from time to time. I mean, I'm not uh, as involved with them, of course, as far as just uh, analyzing the team as I would, say, the Miami Heat. But I am very surprised by that. You got Brogdon. You got Sabonis. I mean, they got some good players on that team. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. This was a big win for the Heat in terms of getting into the playoffs. I mean, that's looking, we still got 15 games, guys, but it's looking a little bit better, especially, as mentioned, with those other two teams really slumping right now um but now of course the next concern is well where will they finish in terms of seeding and remember if you get a seven seed you're likely to play the nets meaning you're likely to play them with harden and in all likelihood durant uh, assuming his injury is not uh as extensive as i don't know if it's going to be extensive or not but i wouldn't think it would be but we just have to wait and see on that so as i mentioned leave me a comment we'll talk soon this is dennis sullivan saying way to go miami heat you bounced back from that horrible loss friday night against the timberwolves and i'll talk to you soon bye for now